I am absolutely blown away by the results I was able to achieve in my reselling business in the month of December. I reached and surpassed my sales goal, which gave me a boost of confidence to shoot for an even higher number for the year 2023. At the end of the video, I am going to talk a little bit more about that goal and how I plan to make it happen. But first, let's go over some of the best and worst sales of the month. We're going to discuss the final numbers and break down the final profits for the month of December. And we're also going to get into the sponsor for today's video, which is Scrintle. Scrintle is an up and coming visual note taking app. The best way to describe them is a mix between mind mapping and note taking. Scrintle will help you organize your brain with what they call the desk, which is like an endless whiteboard that you can add free flowing notes to. Aside from text, to those notes you can also add files, videos, or images. Scrintle also has an awesome linking system that will help you visually connect everything on that desk. And to further organize your information, you can create boards by highlighting a group of notes you created on that desk. You right click, select create board, add a title, and now that board will be easily accessible to you on the menu on the left hand side. I've only been messing around with Scrinto for a few days, but already I can see so much potential with the app. There are so many different ways I can see myself using it to be more organized in my reselling business. As I mentioned last week, I am working towards delegating a lot of my reselling tasks. And right now my main focus is teaching my daughter to list. So using Scrinto, I've created a board with several cheat sheets that she can use to learn everything she needs to know to create a good listing. Another way I can foresee Scrinto being helpful is for day planning. Here on the lower left hand side is a nifty table option. You just select it, click where you want it on the desk, add a couple of columns with titles and below each column you can add cards then you can move those cards amongst the columns as you get through with tasks this table option can also be a great way for you to map out a visual workflow for any business project that you're working on scrinto is a pretty new company that is still in development the app is nice as it is but there are many new features coming in the near future if you'd like to support this company and try the app out now make sure to click the link in my description of this video that'll get you instant access to this app for five dollars a month or you can also join a waiting list and you'll have access to the free version of the web app that is coming sometime this year on to some of the highlights of the month we're starting off with eight High price sales, starting off with a Poshmark sale. It was these Laredo Kill Tie Military Lace Up Combat Mid Calf Leather Boots. They sold for $52 after a shipping discount. That left me with earnings of $39.88. And these boots were only listed two days. This brand is not new to me. I have seen it at the thrift store other times. I've just never picked it up because they were never in good of enough condition. And these weren't either. They did need some cleaning. I went ahead and used some saddle soap on the leather let that dry overnight and then I conditioned them with some Doc Martens leather balsam. So that took the condition of these boots from about a 5-6 to about a 7 or 8. And I only paid about $7 for these boots so that was an awesome profit there. I will take the time to clean up some shoes and make them look nicer if the profit is going to be worth it. But if it's not, then I just leave those shoes behind at the thrift store. And I do have a video where I share my shoe cleaning process that I will link up here in a card and also in the description below. Number seven is an eBay sale and it was the Sperry Real Fur Lined Mid Calf Lace Up Rain Duck Boots. With shipping included, the buyer paid $52.99 after all the fees, I was left with $31.10. 
and these boots took a total of 16 days to sell. I almost left these behind because I couldn't find the size anywhere and I don't like getting shoes that don't have the size, especially boots because it's hard to get an accurate measurement of the insole. But the good thing about these is that the insole was removable. So it was very easy to remove the insole, put a fabric tape over it, put that in the pictures with the listing and I just looked up a Sperry shoe size chart online, used that to get the best size I could, listed it that way and in the end it worked out well. Next sale is not some footwear which I don't have that much of this month. Most of my high price and fast selling items were shoes but I do have a few clothing items in the mix. This is one of them, it was a Poshmark sale and it was a Burton white plaid full zip lined hooded winter ski jacket it sold for $68 my earnings there was $54.40 and it was listed for 25 days this jacket could have probably sold a little bit sooner but I accidentally got it mixed up with another order and so I was waiting for it to be returned back to me before I could get it relisted again so even with that mishap this was still a pretty fast sale Poshmark again number five we have some Ugg studded sheepskin line brown leather mid calf heeled boots these sold for $72 earnings here was $57.60 and these boots sold in just six days so I'm back at it again with Uggs at the beginning of fall when I was starting to look for more boots to list in my closet I was a little bit bummed out because most of the thrift stores were pricing up boots by this brand for way too much I wasn't able to get a lot of them because there just wasn't room for profit but I've been looking at other thrift stores and I have found a lot this month I purchased many boots and loafers shoes and their classic shirling style boots as well in my opinion Uggs really do hold their value and a lot of them can sell for really high prices so this has really boosted my average sale price for the month which is why I love finding them and listing them this month I did sell a total of nine Ugg shoes and the average sale price for those was $45 number four this is an eBay sale and it was this free people studded faux fur quilted Western patchwork vest it sold for $73.47. My earnings there was $50.93. This one did take a bit longer than the others. It took a total of 52 days to sell. A free people item in my high price category is so unlike me. Most of the time I have this brand in my slow moving or low price sales categories. It usually doesn't perform this well for me because I don't come across those high tickets free people items that some other people do and I almost left this one behind actually because it was a bit pricey it was $25 and it was an extra small which is not the fastest moving size it was really nice though and after doing some comps I thought it was worth a try as I said it did sit for a bit but I was able to at least double my money on that so that's good the third sale is also on eBay and it was some fry short moto brown leather buckle biker boots they sold for a total of $82.99 and the earnings was $53.75 these boots were listed for nine days there are three boot brands that I really enjoy finding Fry is one of them and Lucchese and Ariat boots are the other two. All three of those usually sell for $70 and above. And coincidentally, the last two high price sales are the other two brands. I didn't plan it that way, but that just goes to show that that's how it is for me. Those are the three boot brands that I find most often that leave me with the most profit. Number two is these Lucchese Burgundy Leather Cowboy Rodeo Western Top Boots. These sold on Poshmark. They sold for a total of $85. Earnings here was $68. And these did sit a little bit longer than Lucchese boots usually do. It was a total of 163 days. I think the reason these sat around for so long is because they 
there were an old school style that were more vintage and retro looking not really that modern like some of the other ones that i've posted and also they were a size eight which is a smaller size for a man's boot and another thing that i think did not help much with these boots is that I listed them for $195 to start with. I think that was probably shooting way too high but that just goes to show that even after all of these years I still get pricing wrong and also it goes to show the importance of relisting items, re-evaluating comps or at the very least price dropping those very old items that aren't moving. Now moving on to the highest price sale of the month. It was these beautiful Ariat Pendleton Knee High Cowgirl Southwestern heeled boots. They sold on Poshmark for $98. Earnings there was $76.68 and these boots sold in one day. This was an excellent sale all around because it sold for a high amount. It sold really fast and it left me with a very good profit. I paid about $20 for these boots, which is a very good price for this style of Ariat women's boot. Normally, I'm willing to go up to $30, even $35 for them, depending on the style, because I know that there is a lot of room for profit with these, but luckily I was able to find these fairly cheap. Now let's move on to some low, price sales of the month. Some of these I would not pick up again, but some of the items in this list I consider more of decent profit and more of my bread and butter brands. Starting off with number eight, on Poshmark we have these Bolter Gear Wool Blend High Waisted Stirrup Stretch Ski Pants. They sold for $18.00. The earnings there was $14.40 and they sold in 30 days. This is a good bolo style of pant to pick up during this time of year. Most of the time I can find these for anywhere from $2 to $3 for those brands that aren't that well known. And then they will go on to flip for about $15 to $18. But if you can find yourself some ski pants by a more well known brand like Burton, the one we talked about earlier or there's another one called Obermeyer those can go on to flip for even higher sometimes 30 to 40 dollars depending on the different features that the pants may have number seven on the list we have a Poshmark sale again and it was these mosquitoes platform chunky orange coral strappy sandals they sold for $17, which left me with earnings of $13.60, and these took a total of 84 days to sell. I listed these back in September, so when we were barely jumping into fall. Maybe if I would have held off on these till spring or summer, I could have sold them for a little bit more, maybe $24, $25, but I am all about getting items moving. There are some exceptions, but for the most part, if I receive an offer that makes sense, that's still gonna leave me with a decent profit, I'm going to take it. I'd rather do that than sit on items for longer than I need to. Next up, on Mercari, number six, we have this tricolor gold-plated medium-sized engraved circle hoop earrings. They sold for a total of $16, which left me with earnings of $13.64, and these sold in 140 days. If you are a regular viewer, you already know the deal with these jewelry pieces, but if you don't know, let me catch you up real quick. I bought a lot of about 50 jewelry pieces that included rings, earrings, necklace sets, and all sorts of things. I paid a total of $4 for each of those, and it hasn't worked out. I did not like the whole situation, and actually, my mom contacted me last week, I think, to ask me if I wanted to buy another lot from a different supplier and I said no thanks. For her and for other people it may work out to go down that route. She likes the fact that with jewelry pieces you have to have only a small space for inventory whereas with my bulky items, shoes and jackets and jeans, it just takes up a lot more space. 
Also, she sells her items on TikTok. She doesn't use a selling platform. So there's no fees to pay and she keeps a larger part of her profit. All she has to do is worry about paying for the shipping or I think she actually charges her buyer shipping. Either way, shipping is not that much for these small pieces. For me though, compared to the clothing and everything else, it does not leave that much profit for me. They're sitting around for way too long and unlike her, I prefer to focus on selling clothing and shoes shoes mainly is what I really love selling. So for me right now, my only goal is to focus on getting rid of all that jewelry stuff and just forget that whole ordeal never again. Number five on Poshmark, we have this Victoria's Secret French Faux Leather Boho Festive Mini Backpack. It sold for $15 and the earnings here was $9.32. Total days listed was 173. I picked this backpack up on a whim because most of the time purses with fringe and shoes that have tassels and things like that tend to do well. So I didn't even do comps. I just went ahead and picked it up assuming it would do good and sell pretty quickly. But I was so wrong. This thing was just sitting and sitting. The buyer contacted me on Poshmark and asked me if I was willing to do $15 with discounted shipping. I said, of course. I set up the offer for her, gave her $4.99 shipping, and got that thing right out of my inventory. Number four on um, Poshmark again, we have this Marmo long sleeve button arrow print shirt. It sold for $15. The earnings there was $10.28, and this one was listed for 108 days. Some Marmo or Marmot pieces can do well. I've sold many jackets and vests by them that sold for decent prices and fairly quickly. So when I saw this top, I really didn't think that much about it. I just assumed it would do well. Maybe it wasn't going to go on to sell for as much as the jackets do, but I thought it would be at least a quick flip. But I was so wrong about this one, just like with that Victoria's Secret backpack, it would have helped to do comps. Number three, we have this Lane Bryant Baby Doll Ombre Long Sleeve Eyelet Flowy Plus Size Blouse. It sold on Poshmark for $15 as well. The earnings was $12 and this one was only listed for 17 days. I call these type of sales supplemental sales. The profit is not going to be out of this world. After cost of goods, I probably made about $10. But the good thing about it is that it sold quickly. So for those kind of sales, I like them because they do supplement my daily sales. So with this one, I'm okay with and all of that also applies to this next one also on Poshmark. It was this Knox Rose Mandala print tasseled oversized flowy dress. It also sold for $15 and left me with $12 in earnings and it also sold pretty quickly in just 16 days. I sold this dress via closet clear out. The buyer liked the item. I sent her a message, told her that I was willing to drop the price to $18. She came back with a $15 offer instead and I thought to myself, if I don't take this offer now, I'm probably going to be sitting on this dress till spring or summertime. I thought it was best to just take that decent profit and just get that item moving. Number one on the low price selling list was this Levi's Vintage Pintuck Pleated Medium Wash Jean Jacket. It sold on eBay for $14 after shipping and the platform fees, I was left with $11.89. And this one did take a very long time to sell, 340 days. The only reason I picked up this jacket was because it was only $1. But that is not a good reason to pick an item up just because it's cheap. They are hard to pass up since the investment is so low, but I have to constantly remind myself that there must be other factors going on for the item in order for it to work. And I did create a sourcing checklist. I will leave that video linked here in a card and in the description. As much as possible, I try to remind myself of that checklist and follow it as I'm deciding whether to pick items up okay, or not. Going 
back to some of the good sales of the month, we're going to discuss eight items that sold really fast. And there are many in here that could also qualify for high price sales as well. But starting off with the sales that sold in just one day, number eight is a Mercari sale. It was these bare paw brown suede sheepskin wool pull-on winter snow boots. They sold for $52. Earnings there was $44.99. These took just one day to sell. I did almost leave these boots behind because they had a lot of brown spots all over the boots. Other than that, they look to be in good condition. When I got home, I did notice that maybe the sole, the bottom sole was glued back on. It must have came apart and someone used glue to put it back on. I went ahead and cleaned up those spots with some rubbing alcohol and the boots ended up looking in very good condition other than that glue part. I did make note of that in the pictures and in the description and luckily they still ended up doing really well. The thrift store had them priced fairly low, maybe because of those flaws. So I only paid about $8 for these. It ended up being a very good flip. Number seven on Poshmark, we have this Michael Kors monogram logo, black patent leather, glossy tote handbag. It sold for $50, earnings there was $40, and again, this one sold in one day as well. I used to skip Michael Kors bags all the time at the thrift store because they priced them for like 15 to 20, sometimes even more. And after doing comps, I always saw that the profit may not be there, it just wouldn't be worth it. But I did get a bunch of Michael Kors bags through consignment. My cousin gave me a lot of her stuff to resell for her. I kept some of the profit and gave some back to her. And through that, I learned that these that have the logo all around the bag, that are more classic styles tend to do a lot better and sell for a little bit more. So after learning that, I started picking up some of these at the thrift store when I did see them. This month, I picked up a total of three that look very similar to this one, just in different colors and they all sold fairly quickly for about this price range. Number six on eBay, we have these Tom's Classic Alpargata black canvas slip-on flat loafer shoes. They sold for a total of $37.99 and the earnings was $26.08. This one sold in just one day and it sold via eBay's global shipping program. If you haven't enrolled for it and you don't have all of your listings signed up for it, make sure you do so. I make at least two to three sales a month using that program. I wouldn't say that this style of Tom's is an absolute bolo, but from time to time, I do have good luck with these classic canvas flats by them. My requirement for picking these up is that they must be in excellent condition, like new or new with tags, and they must be priced at about five to seven dollars or below. I got lucky with these. They sold for a little bit more than they usually do, but with most of them, I end up getting anywhere from 20 to 25 dollars but the good thing here is that they usually sell really fast number five on mercari again we have the sorrel waterproof fleece line fur trim winter snow boots they sold for 71 dollars earnings was 61.54 and these sold same day this style of boot with the fur trim the lace up the rubber that makes them waterproof is a definite bolo and when paired up with this brand Sorel even more so. I listed these boots for $87 shortly after someone sent me this offer on Mercari. I thought it was fairly reasonable and I went ahead and took it. Number four on eBay, we have these Torrid Equestrian Over the Knee Wide Calf Buckle Riding Boots. They sold for $50.29. Earnings was $22.94, and this is also a same day sale. This could have been a better sale, but the shipping was pretty high on these. My son is doing my shipping right now. By this time, I had not gotten around to teaching him all about regional boxes. With regional A and regional B boxes, sometimes the shipping can be a lot less. And I do still have to teach him all about 
pirate ship and sendo because sometimes those prices can be even lower but even then the profit for this sale was still pretty good i usually pay five to seven dollars for these kind of torrid boots and most torrid shoes do sell really fast but when it comes to these knee-high boots they sell even faster and a lot of the times they end up selling on ebay number three on the list we have a poshmark sale and it was these Tory Burch dark green suede leather pull-on ankle boots. These sold in a bundle for $47.50. Earnings was $12.35 and this was a same day sale as well. Tory Burch is a pretty well-known brand but if you don't know about it, look at this logo here remember it next time you go out sourcing and if you see anything by them i think it's a definite pickup i mean i'm sure there are some exceptions so go ahead and do your comps if you have any doubts but i've picked up dresses skirts jeans and it always ends up being a high price sale number two on poshmark some more equestrian boots these were by the brand Clarks. They were knee-high comfort riding boots that sold for $36. Earnings was $28.80. And again, these took zero days to sell. As I've been saying, Clark shoes are on the decline for me. They tend to sell for a lot lower than they used to, and they're sitting for a lot longer too. But when it comes to boots, and especially knee-high riding boots, those I'm still picking up. I can usually find them priced anywhere from seven to eight dollars, which is how much they price their shoes for as well. But the boots have a lot more room for profit. So if you see them and they're priced at about that much or even a little bit higher I think it's a good pickup and all of that also applies for this next one on Poshmark as well these naturalizer equestrian brown leather knee-high riding boots they sold for $34 the earnings there was $27.20 and they also sold the same day exactly like Clark's their shoes can sit for a little bit and they tend to sell for a lot less than this but when it comes to equestrian style boots, it's usually a decent price sell and a quick flip too. The good thing about this brand is that at the thrift stores around here, they don't value it as much as Clark's. So I can usually find them priced even lower for like about $5 or below. Real quick, let's go over eight sales that took a really long time to sell this month because I think it's also really important to look at the things that didn't go so well, the items that didn't end up panning out as you thought because that gives us information and that way next time we know to avoid those things when we're outsourcing which don't get me wrong some items that sit around for a very long time can be worth it but for me if an item is gonna sit any longer than 90 days the profit better be there which is not the case for any of the sales I'm about to share starting off with Mercari we have these beta brand boot cut yoga career pull-on gray trouser dress pants they sold for $20 which left me with earnings of $17.12 and these took a total of $208 eight days to sell. I usually do very good with beta brand dress pants. People search those things out because they are super comfortable, but these were a petite size. Petite sizes usually tend to sit for a bit longer. So moving forward, I think I'm just going to skip those and focus on the larger sizes or at least anything that is not petite. Number seven on the list, on Poshmark, we have these Carhartt straight leg flannel lined mid-rise dark wash denim jeans. They sold in a bundle and it ended up being that the final sale price was $23.50. Earnings here was $18.80 and these took a total of 255 days to sell. These weren't petite size but they were 12 short. So maybe that's why they took a while to sell or maybe because I listed them back in April and this isn't really a summer type style so it it only made sense that they ended up selling in the fall. Either way, I'm glad to see these go. I was super happy when I saw them in this women's bundle. Number six on Poshmark as well, we have these Levi's Classic Relaxed 550 high rise light wash boot cut denim jeans they sold for a total of $15 which left me with profit of $12 
but these took a total of 312 days to sell. These were in very good condition. The size was a little bit larger. I'm not sure why they took so long to sell, why they didn't end up doing so good. It could just be that Levi's is a oversaturated category on Poshmark. Number five on the list is an eBay sale and it was this Murano 100% Merino wool mock neck soft pullover sweater. It sold for $21.99 earnings here was $12.46 and this one took a total of 320 days to sell. I could not have accepted this offer any faster when I saw it come in on eBay. I was so so glad to see this sweater go. I picked up this sweater mainly because of the material but like I've said before and I need to keep repeating just so that it sinks in my own brain just like brand isn't everything, neither is material. Just because something is cashmere, alpaca, 100% wool or anything like that, doesn't mean that the item will automatically sell or do good. There must be other factors on the item, other things that make it interesting in order to make it sellable. And speaking of brand isn't everything, number four on the list is another eBay sale and it was the Sorrel Youth Little Girl Winter Snow Boots. They sold for a total of $32.99. After shipping and a promotion fee, my earnings was only $12.66 and these were listed for 344 days. At the end of it all, I lost money on these boots. And it's funny how that works because I just talked about some Sorel boots that sold on Mercari really fast for high profit, but these little girl's boots sat around for so long and left me in the negative. I'm not sure if it's because kids Sorel boots don't do as well, or maybe this style of Sorel boot is outdated and doesn't sell for much. I have come across more children's boots that look just like this and now I just pass them up. Number three on Poshmark we have this Tommy Bahama textured knit cow neck pullover sweater. It sold for $11. Earnings here was $8.05 and this sweater was listed for even longer 387 days. Not all Tommy Bahama pieces go on to do this bad. I've sold some men's Hawaiian silk shirts and those tend to sell for decent amounts but this one here was just a terrible buy all around. It was just too plain and nothing special about it. Number two on Poshmark we have these Blondo red leather beaded flower embellished wedge sandals. They sold for $10. This was an offer I happily accepted because these were on the way to be redonated anyway. They left me with earnings of $7.05 and these sandals were listed for 554 days. Again, with the whole idea that brand is not everything, I picked these sandals up because in my mind I just thought Blondo is a good brand. And since then I have gone on to pick up some Blondo boots that did pretty good but I guess these sandals were just too outdated. And the slowest sell of all on Poshmark, we have this Abby Farine Cow Neck Long Sleeve Casual Stretchy Sweater Dress. It sold for $20. After price dropping it and relisting it many times, someone bought it at this full price, which left me with earnings of $16. This sweater was listed for 733 days. I picked this up when I was still a rookie sourcer. I really didn't know what I was doing. I was still just trying things out to see what worked and what didn't. This brand definitely does not work and this style of dress is also a little bit iffy. All right, moving along to the total sales numbers for the month of December. Total sales was $6,693. Earnings after platform fees and shipping fees as well was $5,000 and $400. Cost of goods for everything that sold was $1,605 and the profit after everything was $3,399. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'm just blown away by how this month went. My only goal was to hit my $6,000 sales goal and the fact that I reached it and surpassed it by quite a bit, I'm just so grateful for how everything worked out. Breaking the sales down by platforms though, um, Poshmark, I made a total of 4000 
$350. So that was the main contributor to the high sales this month. Poshmark did go up by about $1,300 from last month. eBay also went up this month. There I sold a total of $1,670. I remember when I started eBay, my only goal was to eventually hit $1,000 in sales in a single month. Now I've reached that and surpassed it and I feel pretty confident that soon I will reach the next milestone, which is $2,000 in a single month. And as for Mercari, there was really no change. The total sales there was $672. That's still a pretty chunk of change from Mercari, which is why I have not been able to bring myself to just give it up. But that is a little bit disappointing when at one point I was hitting $1,000 in a month. I'm still doing the same thing, still price dropping, relisting, sending out offers and everything else I used to do there. But for some reason, sales are just not picking up. But I'm still sticking with it and just seeing what happens. I listed a total of 204 items this month, which makes it an average of about six to seven listings a day that is a little bit more than last month but my goal was to hit 10 listings a day looking back at everything now though I see that I was overshooting even with the extra help that I've had this month from my family here at home it's still very unsustainable for me to shoot for 10 listings a day because there are other things that take up my time throughout the week I'm teaching my daughter to list. I'm refining a lot of processes in the business and working on a few other projects on the side as well. So for next month, I'm just going to keep it a little more reasonable. My only goal is to hit a solid seven listings a day Hopefully we can get up to eight, but if I get to a solid seven, that would be great. Total items sold this month was 210, which makes it an average daily sales of six to seven, and that is a new record for me. The average selling price went up to $32.18 which is awesome and I really hope that I can keep that average sale price at least through January and February as well when I'm listing boots and heavier coats, those kinds of things that have a higher average selling price. Cost of goods did go up slightly too and that was at $7.72 this month. I'm totally okay with my average cost of goods going up as long as the average selling price is also going up along with it. There are many things I did to increase my sales this month. A lot of them really was what I talk about in this video that I will leave linked right here. Everything I share in that video I do on the daily and weekly basis and that's basically what's been increasing my sales over time. But to end today's video I do want to share with you some of my main goals when it comes to reselling in 2023. The first thing I want to do is add another platform to the mix. Right now I'm currently listing on Poshmark, eBay, and Macari but I think that adding another platform would really help me reach my new sales goal. I've been thinking about Facebook Marketplace, but I also do want to try out Depop. I don't want to add two, I just want to choose one of those. So in the comments down below, if you sell on any of those two platforms, let me know what's your experience like on there, and just let me know which one of those two you recommend the most. The other goal that I have is to make maybe only sell shoes. The only concern with this is that maybe I won't be able to find enough inventory, but I kind of already started to put this goal into motion. The past three times that I've been outsourcing, that's all I got, only shoes. I went from store to store, straight to the shoe section, and so far it's been working out and I like it so far. So if it continues to do good, if it continues to raise my sales and my average sale price, and I am able to find enough shoes to list throughout the month, then I will continue with this goal. The other thing I want to do this year is to continue delegating and outsourcing some of these reselling tasks. As of right now, I have my son helping me ship every night. He gets the packages ready to be shipped out the next day. I'm teaching my daughter to list. We're focusing on only shoes right now. 
and also my husband took some time off of work so he's been helping me with some of the admin work with package drop-offs with sourcing pictures and a lot more whether he's going to go back to work or not is still up in the air right now we're thinking maybe only part-time but we still haven't fully decided i don't really know exactly what's going to happen so i may or may not have to hire someone to replace him and help me out with all the things he was helping me out with because it did make a huge difference and as far as sales my new sales goal for 2023 is to hit eight thousand dollars in a single month i did want to go a little bit lower and shoot for seven thousand because i do have a baby who's due in the month of april and also i don't really know if my husband's gonna go back to work or not and there's just many other life circumstances circumstances that are not fully decided right now so I'm not sure exactly how much time I'm going to have to work and to invest into the reselling business but I am giving myself all year to reach that goal and since December went so good I feel pretty confident that I will be able to reach that $8,000 milestone especially if I do go through with that idea of adding a new platform into the mix as well as focusing on only shoes which have a higher average sale price with all of that I should be able to make that happen in the comments down below let me know how was your month of December for your reselling business did your sales go up did they go down or stay steady let's talk about it down in the comments below here off to the side I will leave a playlist that's filled with more reselling income reports just like this one and that's all for me today. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and I'll see you next time.